This class is going to start in a couple of seconds. I just want to um, introduce myself. This is Nelly, and the class is about teamwork and the breakout rooms on WizIQ. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to today's session. This is Nelly, and um, I'm really happy to be here. We're going to be talking about a very, very important topic from my perspective, and that's teamwork and how we can conduct teamwork in a virtual classroom such as this one. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and I've been teaching for over 30 years in face-to-face -face classes, both um, in the K-12 and higher education. So I've had experience teaching English to uh, teenagers and to adults, as well as other subjects. I've been uh, teaching blended, which is a combination of face-to-face -face and online for the past, uh, I'd say, 15 years, maybe longer. And um, teamwork is one of my favorite teaching methods. All right, so if you could just um, introduce yourself in the chat. This is being recorded, and it's going to be on YouTube without your names right now and without the chat box. The recording is also available from the same link that brought you here. All right, so where are you based right now? Where are you? All right, so we've got Mexico. And I presume we've got a teacher. And we also have a student. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, let's get started. I'm going to ask you questions. You can add them. The responses in the chat box. I'm sure other people will be coming along as soon as they realize that there is a live session today, but that's okay. Uh, this class was postponed from last week because um, I had uh, laryngitis. I couldn't speak very well. All right, so as you can see, there are A, B, and C. If you could maybe share the differences between A, B, and C, what is different? And maybe similarities. So you can start with a D. How are they different? And then add S. How are they similar? Okay, there's no right answer or wrong answer. It's whatever you think. And then we'll talk about it. Okay, well, first of all, um, A is um, a class. It's a big class. And as you can see, there are people in the front. You could hardly probably see them. Uh, there are lots of uh, participants in the audience, and everybody seems to be looking at what's happening on stage. And that's what's important, what's on stage, okay? Everybody else, the audience, is uh, pretty passive, okay? Just sitting and listening, maybe being entertained. It could be a lot of fun, okay? B, again, you see the instructor. Okay, the instructor is writing on the whiteboard. Everybody is uh, paying attention to whatever is happening on the whiteboard. There's also a uh, projector here with flowers on it. But nobody's looking at that. Everybody seems to be quite focused on the presenter. Okay, it could be a teacher, it could be anyone. But you're right, uh, Alan. They're all actually 
focusing on the teacher. And that's exactly the point. If you take a look at C, okay, you have a bit of engagement here. Okay, the uh, instructor or teacher is um, actually presenter is looking at the audience. Probably uh, the audience is not passive. The audience seems to be active. Okay, here's one person raising their hand. There's another one here that's chuckling. So there seems to be some kind of interaction between the content, which is on the whiteboard. There's also content here on the flip chart. And you can see that uh, there's also interaction between the instructor, one of the participants, and perhaps the participant. The other participants are also interacting to one another. Now, A is in a big hall. B is in a small room. And I presume that C is also a pretty small room. Okay, there aren't too many people. I keep that in mind. Small rooms for teaching. I don't know how many students you have in your classes, but I've had classes with over 500, both face-to-face. -face. I've had conferences where I presented, and there were thousands of people. And the question is, is this what you prefer? Or is it a smaller group, such as in B and C? And how can we make the most as presenters? when we have small groups. Yes, Al, they do seem to be. Okay, so today's session is about teamwork, breakout rooms in the virtual class, which is this class. The participants, you, will learn about teamwork and how to use the breakout room on WizIQ and teach in groups. The presenter, that's me, will divide you, hopefully we'll have enough of you, into small groups you may find yourself in one group and give each of you a room to prepare a task. Every room will have a leader and the leader will be able to uh, do what I do right now. In other words, be in control. All right, you can see people are coming in. So uh, we've just started for those who came in. And the question is this, team learning and breakout rooms are the same. How is team learning different from traditional learning? Okay, we looked at, you saw the slides. Let's go back to them. Okay, you saw these images, A, B, and C. Okay, these are all traditional, very traditional. Maybe C is not so traditional, but A and B are definitely traditional with the teacher up front. Okay, so C is actually traditional too. The teacher, as one of you mentioned, is up front. Okay, and that's the traditional way of learning. Okay, put the teacher out there, and the teacher is responsible for the content and not the participants. And it's the teacher that pulls. Okay, the teacher is in charge no matter what. Okay, so learning is basically done by the teacher who prepares everything and organizes everything. And today we're going to look at team learning as opposed to the traditional teacher uh, presenter. We'll talk about traditional versus team learning, teaching in groups. How is teaching in groups uh, different from traditional? Is teaching in groups necessarily team learning? Is this what happens in small groups? And you saw in the images that it doesn't. Okay, and then team learning. Notice it's team learning, not team teaching. And then we'll talk about the breakout rooms and teaching in the breakout rooms, which is what you're going to do. That's your assignment. Your assignment is to teach in a breakout room and, of course, record. So let's take a look at A, B, and C once again. All right, so there's A. Okay, just to make sure that you remember. Okay, so this is a traditional learning platform. I don't know if any learning goes on here, but it's a, it's up to the individual. Okay, there's the teacher up at the top, okay, on the stage, and everybody is listening or not listening. But in this case, they seem to be attentive. And then... What is a breakout room? Breakout room is, this is a breakout room. B is a breakout room, okay? A is where everybody is together, okay? This is where the presenter is talking, and then everybody breaks up into small groups, 
okay and this is like a breakout room because you break out of the room breaking out of a and going into b okay so b is a smaller version of a okay it's just a group and c is another example of how it's set up. See, B, they're sitting around a table. While in C, they're also sitting around the table, but it's different, okay? They're not really in a circle or an L shape, okay? It's very traditional, even though it's a breakout room. And the idea is to have a breakout room but also to have team learning, learning together as a team. Okay, so in this case, it looks good. It's arranged pretty well. Okay, this is a breakout room, a physical breakout room, but um, it's not really team learning because it's just teaching in groups. The, this is a small group, and the teacher is doing the teaching. Okay, they're not teaching one another. It's only the teacher that's on stage. And that's what we want to uh, talk about. So traditional learning model is where the instructor or the presenter, as I am right now, okay, what I'm doing right now is very, very traditional. Okay, this is a traditional way of doing it because I'm actually providing you with information and you're just sitting there Okay, you may be chatting in the chat box, which is wonderful. Hello, Helena, which is great, but it's still the traditional way of teaching. So I'm the instructor and I am dispensing information. I am dumping information at you. The information could be relevant to you. It may not be relevant. It could be true. It could be false. It could, it's just information. And you may have to check up on me to make sure that, uh, okay, I'm dumping good information. So the instructor is responsible for the learning to occur. I am in charge. And if I want to make sure that you learn something, I'll test you and find out whether you got something. Okay, this is the traditional model. Let's continue with the traditional. In the traditional model, you are, yes, you can have a debate, but it's still not team learning, Alan. It's still group. Um, it's the teacher teaching in a group, okay? A student is a passive receiver of information. You're just getting the information. The classroom resources are not into the teaching. Whatever you have in the classroom, okay, is not added to the teaching process the learning process. The content is determined by testing. If I test you, I'll know whether you learned something or not. But the point is, what are you going to do with the information? Are you going to use it? Or are you going to just show me that you know it? And I'll give you a big smiley and a V. And maybe I'll give you a grade, or I'll pay you. <laughs> I'll reward you in some way for knowing what I have dispensed on you. So uh, what we want to do is we want to break the classroom, the big classroom, into small groups. But we want the group to work together and learn together. We want them to teach one another, learn from one another, Okay, what we want is a team and not a group. A group are people together, lumped together, and they have no connection. So think of a team as a basketball team. Why is it a basketball team? If you can add in the chat. What makes a basketball team a team and not a basketball group? Okay, what makes a team? In sports okay because I think that's uh, where most of us see teams working as a team there's cooperation they have to cooperate they throw the ball to each other 
they have a goal, they have a common goal, okay, which is really important. This common goal, what is the common goal? It's to get as many points as they can and to throw as many baskets as they can. And very good, they use their skills and they practice, they practice together, okay? Think of these things, common goal, practice, practice for what? To get to the goal. Okay, we can learn along with the teacher. Forget the teacher. Who needs the teacher? Well, you have a coach. You're right. The coach does help. Okay, you need a coach to help out. Okay, but it's the team that will win the game, not the coach. Practicing together, exactly. So, going from a team Going into a team from a group requires practice, and it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't put uh, people together and tell them, okay, play basketball, okay? It takes time for them to become united, okay? It's a process, and the instructor does help, okay? You need an instructor or a coach, someone to help the team become a team. That's what a good coach does, right? A good coach that has a winning team is because the coach helped them become a team. And you need to facilitate the transformation to go from a group of individuals who are not connected into a team. So you go from group to team. All right, so let's continue. So the role is to, of the teacher or the instructor or the presenter, is to facilitate the process by providing. Now think of basketball or soccer, I'm sorry, you can think of soccer or polo or any other team sport, water polo, any other, your favorite team. By the way, what is your favorite team sport? I think mine is basketball. But what is yours? What is your favorite team sport? I'm sure everybody has a favorite. Could be soccer, okay, or I don't know. Um, football. All right, Andre. Okay, football. You mean American football? Soccer is kicking the ball, and American football is kicking, but also jumping over everybody. Oh, no sound? Oh, I see there is sound. There should be sound. Um, you'll have to. Contact support, support, okay, and they will help with audio, okay, that's what I can say. So we need to give them a place. They need to have a place to practice, right? Somebody mentioned skills, that's excellent. Who mentioned skills? Oh, volleyball, yes, Claire, that's right. I used to love to play volleyball. You can't play volleyball. On a team, unless you work together, you're not going to get very far. <laughs> uh, even though sometimes one player can make a huge difference. So first of all, you need a, play, a means. You need a place to play. You need a room. The room has to have everything you need. Okay, so for volleyball, you need to have a good court. You need to have a net. Um, you need to have maybe air conditioning, so it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't be too hot or heat, well, heating, I'm not sure if you'll ever need heating because you get heated up anyways. So you need a means, you need skills and the ability, okay? And you can practice these and you need the opportunity to practice, okay? Without practice, there's no team learning. Exactly, Alan, you need basic material, you need content, you need something to work with. All right, now somebody asked me, I think, Alan, you asked about what is a breakout room. Well, these are breakout rooms, okay? If we go back to the first uh, slide, okay, then A, you need to break away from A and go into this one, breakout rooms, okay, where you break out of the main room. So if right now you're in the main room with me and we're all together, I will break up this room and place you in separate rooms in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Trust me, it will happen. I will 
Okay, I still have a cold and I was just blowing my nose there, didn't want it to be shown. Got different kinds of breakout rooms. How would you describe one? This is a breakout room. What do you think is happening here? Okay, I'm looking at this one with the glass doors. Team, excellent, Donna. That's right. There's team performance. I like that. That's right. And it is more than individual skills. It's putting all our skills, pooling our skills together. And they seem to be working on what? Okay, what are they working on? You can use your imagination. Just from the way they look there, they seem to be having fun. Okay, they're probably working on some project, but they have a goal. You can see that they have a common goal. And they are working as a team. I don't know if there's any team learning, but I'm sure there will be when they're finished. Okay, and there's no instructor to lead them. Okay, they're self-sufficient. They're working independently. So actually team learning is learning on your own okay the teacher is there somehow but not in here now take a look at this one where there's a whiteboard here there's no whiteboard notice they're just using we talked about facilities the means well in this case there's only a table and chairs and they're sitting around the table here they're sitting around the table but they also have technology okay they've got their laptops and they also have a whiteboard and they also have a big screen here okay it could be a projector how can we get the same confidence well you know working together i think it adds a lot of confidence okay because you have no choice you have a goal and you have to get there it takes practice to get the con gain the confidence and to be a team player and to learn together that's right they do need to be responsible okay so these are breakout rooms now how is this room different notice okay what's in this room okay you've got a screen here you've got tables and nobody's here <laughs> the room is empty okay so the breakout room is waiting for you this is your room okay it's waiting for you to go there All right, so this is a team learning model. Okay, these are team learning models. Okay, so notice what they're doing, how they're working together. Everybody's equal and responsible. As Helena says, they have a goal and they need to, to get somewhere. So if it's to get a grade and they all need to get a good grade, they have to work together. If it's to make money or a business plan, they have to work together to get there. So breakout rooms are not just for groups. It's for team learning and you need to plan. Helena, by the way, did you try to, to do this task? I'm not sure. Um, you need to plan it. You need to plan as a teacher. You need to plan a goal. What is going to be the goal? What is the task? What do you want the team to do? And that's what we're going to talk about web quests uh, next month. At the end of the month, we have one web quest. And then next month, we're going to spend the whole month on creating web quests. So web quests is one way where you can plan a task and then practice, reflect, and try again. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to create, schedule a class, plan what you're going to do, and you have to plan to have a common goal, or you can have a jigsaw. Okay, Helena can give a topic. And then everybody, it has to, they have to work together. They need to practice this, they need to reflect, and they need to try it again. Again and again and again, until they will be able to learn as a team. Okay, and a little bit about the breakout rooms on WizIQ. 
you need to schedule a class, a live class such as this one. And then when the class begins, you can access the breakout room practice. You cannot do this until the class opens. And you cannot do this unless you have a few attendees. I suggested 10. So you can divide the class, the breakout room, into three, at least three or four rooms. Okay? All right. So what you have here, this is um, the breakout room in this class. You need to click on it. When you click on it, you go to edit room. You go to the room. Okay, and I'll show you this in a minute. And then you create a new room. You give it a name and then you add people to the room. Okay, you edit the name. It's very, very simple, but you need to do it with people in the classroom. And again, it takes practice. So if it doesn't work the first time, try it again and again and again. The only um, challenge is getting enough people to come to your class so that you can practice dividing them into breakout rooms. You can give your new room a name. You can call it room one or you can call it whatever you like. Okay, so this is what it looks like on WizIQ. Okay, notice you have all the rooms here. You open it up and then you have the list of attendees and you can move them to each room. Once you're ready, you click on Start over here on the bottom left, Start Breakout Room. Now, if this is confusing, if it's confusing, don't worry. I suggest you invite everybody that's in this class to your session, or at least bring your family, bring your friends. Let's see how it works. Okay, I'm going to screen share. Hopefully, it'll work out. Okay, and I'm going to start the breakout room with you. So right now there are, uh, let's say, four people, five, six people. Let's try and see how it works. Okay, so let me start with the screen sharing. In the meantime, while you're waiting and my voice has frozen, at least everything has frozen. Okay, let's wait until things start happening. Everything freezes, as you can see. Okay, there we go. Now you can see my voice moving again and you can hear me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start. You're going to see the screen, okay, as it happens. Now, since this is being recorded for, and it's going to be uploaded to YouTube, you'll see what I did. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to go into the breakout room, which is at the top. I hope you can see it. Okay, there it is. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go to Edit Room. Okay, you'll see this when you do it. Okay, so here it is. Can you see Breakout Session? Can you see this? Well, I hope you can. You will in the recording. All right. Next, I have one, two, three, four, five people. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide you into two. Don't be afraid. Nothing will happen. But it'll be interesting. You'll see what happens. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a room. Okay, here it is. Create a room. I'll give it a, I'll call it room one, but I can change the name. Let me call it team. Okay, I'll make it more interesting. I'll call it Team A, so you'll see the difference. Okay, Team, sorry about that, Team A. Okay, that's okay. I'll click on OK. Now, for the next room, I'll create a new room. I'll call this, instead of Room 2, I'll call it Team B. Okay, and click on OK. Now, I have two rooms. I need to bring people into the room. So I'm going to open up all rooms, go into Team A, okay, and then I want to add people to Team A. 
Okay, so uh, how do I do that? I go to the main room and then I'm going to tick you off. So Alan Claire will go into Team A. All right, so I'm going to move you, notice, into Team A. They're gone. Okay, now I've got Andre, Valentina, and Persevere. Great name. <laughs> Persevere. I'm going to move you guys into Team B. Okay, now you can see here on the right, everybody's gone. Okay, and you can see on the right that I have Team B with three and Team A with one. So let me uh, start this. Are you ready? Uh, oh, I have to make somebody lead. I'll make Andre. Andre, do you have a, um, a microphone? Let me know in the chat if you have a microphone. If it, the chat is lost, it's at the bottom left hand. Just pop it up. Not yet. Okay, uh, Valentina, do you have a microphone? You don't need a webcam. Microphone is fine. So I can decide who to make... So, Valentina. Okay, I'll make the, um, Valentina, let's say she does. I'll make Valentina lead. You can make one person leader. Now I'm going to go into uh, room team A, and I'm going to Alan. I'll make you the lead. Okay, I can change that afterwards. Okay, now I'm going to start breakout session. We everybody is now in their section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into team A. Let me go there now, go to the room, and I'm going to say hello. Hello team A. Team A and you can see here, let me just pop this out. You can see Okay, I'm going to show this to you. You can see that Alan, okay, there's Alan here, that Alan has an L next to his, okay, over here has an L, which means that he's the leader, okay? Alan is the leader, and um, he's in Team A with Claire, and Valentina is a leader. She has an L, and she's in Team B, just to show you this. Okay, and now I'm talking, I'm in Team A, and I'm talking to you guys in Team A, and I see Claire, what happened to Claire? Um, Claire doesn't seem to be. Um, Claire, Alan has the right to draw, okay? So hello, Team A, and I'm going to give Claire the whiteboard to also be able to write on the whiteboard. Okay, Claire. So you can also use the whiteboard in your room. So in the room, what you actually have is you have all the tools. You have the means. You have a whiteboard. You have writing tools. You can add PowerPoint presentations from your computer. In other words, you can learn together as teachers. Okay, so what happened to Team B? It looks like somebody disappeared in Team B. We lost someone. So let me go back to Team B. Okay, I'm going to go into um, Team B. Okay, let's see. Let's go into Team B. I'm going to leave Team A. Now I'm in Team B, and I noticed that we lost the lead. So let me make Andre the lead, Valentina. Um, maybe had to leave the room okay all right now if you had a goal you wouldn't leave the room you would uh, do what you have to do okay so Andre you're the lead and right now I'm in room B okay I'm going to room B hello room B okay I hope you can hear me oh I see the sound has gone down okay let me make sure that the sound okay the sound is back okay you should be able to hear me now Nope, the sound is gone again. Let's see if we can fix the sound. The sound seems to be just fine, so I don't understand why it looks like it's not. Okay. All right. 
so um, team B, okay? How are you doing? If you could just add in the chat. And I see Persevere says he can do it. Okay, so, uh, okay, your task is to ask questions. Come up with three questions related to teamwork. Learning. Okay, team learning. Ask one question. Okay, one question is enough. Okay, that's your task in Team B. Let me go back to um, Room A. Okay, hello everybody in Room A. I'd like you to uh, come up with one question about team learning. One question, that's all. Okay, when you're ready, let me know. I see Persevere doesn't know English. That's good. Okay. Okay, I hope everybody has it. Now, notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring everybody back. I'm going to go into end breakout session. There we go. Okay, I ended the breakout session. And everybody should be back. Okay, that's it. That's the end. I can go back to it later. Okay, so notice what I did. I'm going to stop screen sharing. I hope I can stop screen sharing. Okay, I stopped screen sharing and we're all back. Okay, I stopped the breakout rooms, but I can always go back if I want to. Okay, I can go back to um, the rooms. Okay, they're still there. Okay, you can see that they're still there. But I asked you to come up with one question about team learning. So do you have one question for team learning? And I see that Valentina's back. I'm sorry, Valentina, that um, you were maybe kicked out. I think that you should contact support at wizIQ.com if you have problems. They will be able to call you by phone and help you through Skype or any other means. So they can help. WizIQ can help you uh, the system. Okay, if you can write your question in the chat, please do. Write one question from Team A and one question from Team B. Okay. So let's see. One question. Not yet. Okay, Claire doesn't have a question. All right. Do you need more time in the breakout room to come up with a question? All right. So um, the experience, how was the experience of being in a breakout room? Okay, if you can just maybe share that in the chat box. What was the experience like? To be by yourself without me. Okay, for those of you that are interested, it's quite easy, but you need practice to uh, play around with the breakout rooms. And as I said, you have to plan. And you have to know how many participants you're going to have. Okay, it's really important to know how many. All right, let's continue. The task of the week. This is a course where you get a certificate at the end of the course. The name of the course is Learn. I don't know how you got here, but the name of the course is Learn to blend with learn to blend and flip okay and flip with technology that's the name of the course all right and the course is on Wiz IQ it's a free course it started in November it's going to end in at the end of June and if you do the tasks you get a certificate signed by me the sound keeps going away. Uh, for whom? For Claire. 
So anyone, okay, let me write this. Anyone who loses sound, please contact with, uh, with support, sorry, support at wizIQ.com and they will help. Okay, so please do that. All right, so the task of the week is to recruit 10 or more participants. Okay, you need to get, and you can get them from the course. Okay, this in itself is team, team learning. So get 10 or more participants. Next, prepare a project-based lesson. Okay, even if you're not a teacher, you can practice and become a teacher. Anyone can teach these days. It's just a question of practice. Prepare, and you might want to look this up in the uh, internet, prepare project-based learning. Next, schedule a class on WizIQ. If you need a premium account, let me know and I will help. Okay, just email me. Everybody in the course uh, will get a free premium account. Just contact me at Nelly Deutsch, if you're a teacher, gmail.com and I will help. Okay, schedule class. Next, invite the participants, the 10 participants to your class to your live class. Decide on a leader in advance and prepare the leader for the task. Now the leader has to have a webcam. You can work with WizIQ support to get, uh, to get, to make sure that the settings of the audio and video, the webcam is working. So contact WizIQ to make sure that the system is working really well. You need a leader. Next, set up three or more breakout rooms. If you have 10 people, three rooms is enough. If you have more than 10, you might want to have four rooms. Give one member the room, the role of a leader. Okay, as I said before, ask the leaders you had prepared to give the task. So the leaders will share the task with the other members of the breakout rooms. Okay, next, bring everyone back. That's how you do it. Ask the leaders to summarize the results of the task. Now the task is like a goal. Next, record the class using Screencast-O-Matic. We talked about it. By the way, this PowerPoint presentation is in the course. They can use Screencast-O-Matic for free on a PC or QuickTime Player on a Mac. These are completely free and you can record your WizIQ class using these two free, they are free, screencasters. You can upload your file, your MP4 file, to Vimeo or YouTube video. I know that not everybody gets YouTube videos, so you can do it to Vimeo. Then you share the link of the YouTube video or Vimeo in the courseware of the course Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. That's the name of the course. Okay, again, don't forget to record the class using Screencast-O-Matic or QuickTime. <laughs> ah, Valentina, we finally heard you. You now have uh, yeah, excellent, excellent, Valentina now has audio and video. That's great. That's good to hear. You upload the file, your MP4, to Vimeo or YouTube video again, and you share the link in the courseware for the course, Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. And that's it. Are there any questions? 
are there any questions? If you can just add that in the chat. Any questions? Oh, I see Tammy, you joined us and some other people have. Sorry you came late. No questions. All right. So again, your task is to schedule a lot. All this information is in the course. Does everybody have the link to the course handy so that they can add it uh, to the chat? Does anybody have the link to the course? So we can add it to the chat. I'm recording, so I don't want to leave my station right now. Does everyone, anyone have it? You don't have to go away to get it. You just need to open another window, another window. Actually, you know what? I can do it. Let me do it. I can do it. I don't have to go anywhere. I can do it right here. Okay, so uh, let me do it for you. Uh, let me open a tab, new tab, and uh, it's called uh, WizIQ. Oops. Okay, I'll get the course and share it in the chat box. Okay, so here we are. I'm not sure if all of you have joined the course. Maybe you haven't. So I think it's important to join the course. There we are. Here's the link. Okay, let me share the link. Okay, in the oh, you got it. Thank you, Andre. That's so kind of you. Okay, Andre. Okay, you got there faster than I did. Very good. All right, that's teamwork, okay? Eh? Okay, excellent. Okay, so there's the link. Andre had added it. So join the course if you haven't already. Everything is there. This PowerPoint presentation is there. In fact, I can get it for you. It's in the courseware. All the live classes are also in the courseware. Don't forget, um, the next session is going to be on creating a, uh, let me see, tell you exactly what it is. Okay, it's um, creating a course syllabus. And after that, we've got, and that's on Friday, that's tomorrow, actually, engaging online activities, Poodle on <laughs> Poodle. We're going to learn about Poodle. Web quests and all of February, the end of January and February, we'll be discussing web quests. Okay, and you'll be creating your very own web quest. So, let me get the link to this PowerPoint presentation teamwork and breakout rooms. As I said, all this is available in the course, uh, the link that Andre added. Okay, here is the link to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, there it is in the chat box. Okay, so there's the link to the PowerPoint presentation that you saw today. Okay, so I'd like to thank you, if there aren't any questions, for uh, joining this session and uh, practice, practice, practice. As I said before, Team learning requires a lot of practice, and using the breakout room also requires practice. So for those of you who came late, let me just give you the task once again. The task of the week is to recruit 10 or more participants. You can get them from the course. Just go into the learners, and you can um, send them a message. 10 people. At least, okay, could be more. And then prepare a project based lesson, a goal, something you want the participants to do in Teams. Schedule a live class on WizIQ. Invite the participants to the class. Decide on a leader and prepare the leader. The leader is going to do your work as a teacher, okay, because we want the team to learn together. And then you set up three or more breakout rooms once you start the class. Okay, 
end, you bring everyone back, and then you ask the leaders to summarize the results of the task or the goal, okay, the purpose of your, okay, and um, once you do that, you record for free using Screencast-O-Matic on your PC or QuickTime Player on a Mac. These are completely free and you can actually record your live class and then you upload the files to Vimeo and YouTube and you share the link in the courseware and that's it all right so thank you thank you everyone thank you for um, again coming to the session there is a clap for you all and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow when we talk about a syllabus and how to make the syllabus exciting. Tomorrow, and um, practice, okay? It really does take practice. So um, thank you. Bye bye. I will be adding this to the course, okay? This will be on YouTube, and I'll be adding the link to YouTube, just like I expect you to do.